Hello, everybody. This is Karen Greenhouse. I'm your presenter for the day. Um, welcome to ClassTed.net and Overview, our first webinar. And my name is Karen, as I said before. I'm a professor, an adjunct professor at Drexel University, and I am also the spokesperson for Casio America. And I work a lot with ClassTed.net, which is why I'm doing these sessions. And um, I have with me Amy Chow, so I'm going to let her introduce herself. Hello. Um, like Karen said, my name is Amy Chow, and I will be the moderator for this webinar. I'm also the training and product manager with Casio. Um, I've been here for about 10 years and am a former educator. Um, before Karen gets started, I want to kind of dive in to remind you guys that everyone will be muted on this webinar. Um, if you have any questions, you can open up the, the group chat uh, portion. Um, it would probably be a good idea to open it up now um, so that you have it next to you know our screen, um, and that way you can type up any messages you have, any questions you have, and I will do my best to help answer. Um, if I see something that you know a lot of people are asking about, um, I might stop Karen and have her you know ask her the question out loud um, so that she can answer it there. Okay. Thank you. So I'm going to get started. This webinar is a very very broad overview of what classpad.net is. We're not going to dive into the details. We're going to have some follow-up webinars where we're going to get much more into specifics. But this webinar is really just what is classpad.net? How do I get on? Why do I need an account? Those types of things. So I'm going to switch my screen right now to the landing page of classpad.net. So bear with me while I do that. And Amy is going to keep me apprised of whether things are showing up as they should. They should. So Amy, can we see? Yep, looks good. Okay, so this is the landing page of classpad.net. It is a web-based, free online math software. And it's free to students, it's free to teachers, and it's shareable. And we're gonna be getting into just really basics about that in a minute. But here's the landing page. And you'll see there's a lot of, um, resources up here that we're going to talk about at the end, but this is a nice little quick video if you want to watch it that kind of does a really fast, um, what does ClassPed do? But I want to scroll down and show you some other things. So here is, if you don't have an account, you don't have to create an account, you can just start playing. So that's where we're going to go in just a minute. But you can also create an account, which we're going to talk about. So this is where that would be. And then there's video tutorials, how to. So we're going to go over all of this very briefly in this webinar. So I'm gonna just click Start Exploring to show you that you can just start playing with math without having an account. So students, um, teachers, if you just wanna have them to see something really quick, they don't have to be logging into an account or anything. So when you click the Start Exploring, it comes to the first blank page that we'll see, and it's, it's gonna take just a little while here. So this is what it looks like when you open up classbed.net. It is a blank screen, and there's this little um, kind of information piece that's if you don't have an account pops up and basically it's saying create a sticky note by clicking or touching the paper and basically that's the idea behind classpad.net instead of forcing you to start graphing or doing geometry you can decide what you want to do on this blank piece of screen so I'm going to just click somewhere and notice now I have these icons and this is all the things you can do with classpad.net I can do calculations so as you would expect with a calculator, I can add, subtract, multiply, divide, do a lot of things, a lot of functionality. I can graph, I can do geometry, I can do statistics, data, there are sequences. And this one that's hidden is called financial, and it's hidden because this currently is an unregistered an account. So it's kind of locked until you get into the full account. And then here's text. So these are the things I'm gonna just briefly go over once we go into my account. Now I'm gonna go into an account just to show you the difference. So take a look around. Right now, this is an unregistered account. I could start playing. Um, let me just pull up a graph here to show you what I mean by that. So here's a graph. I could graph a function. Uh, let's type in a fun one. And I'll see my function, and I'll see if I click on it, I see key points. I can come up here and get a table. All of this I can do without actually having an account. But if I'm doing this great work and I say, oh, I love what I've done, if I don't have an account, I can't save anything. So there's no place for me to save the work that I've done, which is why it is a good idea to create your own account. So I'm gonna go back to the main page. 
Oh, I should, yes, I have to do that. Sorry. Amy, correct me if I slow me down if I'm going too fast. I know I talk very fast. So, so far, have, so good. Okay, I have an account, so I'm going to hit login and register. And I want to show you the difference when I am into my account. So it's going to pop up, and it it's already populated my account, so I'm just going to log in. And I'm going to point out a couple differences. So in the unregistered account, you didn't have this cloud. And now that I'm in my own personal account, this cloud means that everything I do is auto-saving. So that's really nice. You don't have to remember to hit save, and, and it's doing it automatically. And it's saving it over here to my papers. So everything I'm doing is being saved automatically. So this is definitely a reason why you want to create an account. I'm going to briefly talk about um, some of the activities that are already there, but one thing that also happens if you have an account is if you find an activity that somebody else created and you love it, you can duplicate it and it now becomes your activity. So all of these things are added features when you log in and create an account. So I really recommend everyone create their own account. While I'm here real quick, just a couple things. There is a help section. This is important. There's a user guide. There's a list of functions which I will briefly show you. Um, they pop up when we're in the calculate. And if you're interested in the privacy and service terms, those are there as well. Um, you can change the color of any sticky that we're talking about by uh, clicking here. And then I did want to briefly mention three dots is really important in classpad.net. It means that there are settings in whatever you're in. So this three dots here at the top of the paper is controlling the entire paper. That's what we call um, our activities in classpad.net, we call them papers. And so here's where you can change math settings and variables and put tags on things and descriptions if you're going to be sharing them and saving them. So three dots, very important. So let's get into the very brief overview of the icons that are here. So the calculate is what you would expect. So if I click on it, it brings up a calculate sticky. We call these stickies because basically think of it as post-it notes. That's sort of how I like to think about it. And they can stick wherever you decide you want them. And so this is uh, the beauty of ClassPad to me is I can make my paper, my activity look any way I want because I can drag everything and position it where I want it. So I'm just put my calculate over here. And this does exactly what you expect. And notice when I'm in a calculate sticky, this template shows up. So we have the template for our key keypad is that what we call it Amy? <laughs> keypad um, yes. so here's here's your basic numbers but you'll notice that there's lots of different options here so if I go into math here's templates for my trigs and theta and then there's other tabs here so you'll see there's a lot of templates that are already built in that you can use when you're doing your calculations there's a third one here that comes up when we get into sequences um, there's some information, there's little templates here as well, interactive that kind of step you through things if you're not quite sure how to do certain activities. And then there's, of course, the alphabetic. ClassPad works very well on mobile devices so and touch screens, so that's why you see, the, see these keyboards here. These will pop up if you need to do that. So it is uh, touchpad friendly as well. So let's just show you, calculate is ex exactly what you would expect. So. Um, I'm just going to do a real quick demo, and we'll even use a template here. So let's say I want to do fractions, and and I use the keypad to do that, but I could also use um, just my computer. So I'm working on my own computer. So let's do some multiplication here. If I just use my keypad in the backward slash, I can also get the fraction. So I, I'm doing a calculation here. And notice it's coming up in decimal form, but we can also toggle into standard form. So that's a nice feature. You can toggle and use, you know, your rational roots. Uh, what's a good one here? 30. So it will give, oh, well, that, that was not a very good example, was it? <laughs> no. <laughs> <Sorry about> <laughs> 24 well, kind of, is probably a better example. Right now ahead of time, right? <laughs> oh my God. So another thing that's nice, and this is where that function list comes in handy, the one that I mentioned up here on the right, is if I, let's say I want to do something like factor. The minute I start typing in letters, it's, it's, it's showing me the different functions that I can do. So that's a really nice feature that I, that comes up 
in ClassBet. Now, I'm only just briefing you on each of the icons. So calculations do calculations. Um, let's Karen, go. before you close that, oh, yes, thank can you. you go back to factor? Yes. Do you want me to actually write it see? out? No. Oh. Can you click, actually click, show them that if you click on the, the line that they choose, that it'll populate so then they don't have to necessarily remember what they need to put in. Oh, that's true. Excellent point. Yeah. So I could put in an expression, an equation, a list of a matrix, matrix or a variable, mm -hmm. and it will yeah. factor them for me. And then it'll and go ahead and find her. So. So that yeah. is so a anytime really you, amazing. Yes. Sure. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, Thank you. And so let's, let's again, these are just overviews. You can explore more on your own. And we're going to get into other webinars. We're going to go into much more detail with these icons. Um, so the next one is graph. And I already showed you the graph of a function, right? Um, I'm going to show you one of my favorite features about um, ClassPad. And let's just make a couple functions here. And if I want to do another one, notice this little button here, just I can add as many functions as I want here. So let's do something a little more interesting. Oops, it helps if I actually put the exponent there. There we go. All right, so here is my graph. And notice I, if I click on them, Either, either thing, I get my key points, which is really nice. And here's something I love to point out is because we have a CAS engine behind classped.net, our answers will be in standard form. Now you can change it. Remember what I talked about with three dots. This is a graphing sticky. There are three dots that control its settings. And so notice when I do that for graphing, I can turn the axes on and off, the numbers, the grid. I can put labels, specific labels in for my axes. I can change my window. Um, and I can also change my coordinates to be decimal versus standard. So lots of things you can do when you're in the settings. But I'm, I like to show this just because so, that's pretty cool to me. Um, and it's showing you, you know, the key points right here. Notice also, um, if you have graphs that are intersecting each other, why is it not? There we go. Oh, well, that's a really scary button, scary intersection, that's why. Um, here's this intersection. What is it doing? All right, you know what? I'm going to change it to decimal so it's not so scary. There we go. That's, this is what I was trying to show you. When you have intersections of graphs, notice that the uh, points show that it's on both lines, which is just a really amazing visual for me. Um, and when you're in here, you can do tables, like the geek functions will have their tables pop up, and you can change these numbers to be whatever you want. If I want to find out, oh, I already have, that's a boring number. If I want to know what is it at 10, it'll give me the answer. So you can do a lot of different things like that. But what I love, this is my favorite thing about it, Notice that each graph, in a sense, gets its own tab down here. So if I had, you know, five, I'd have five different tabs. I can grab these tabs and pull or separate the graphs. And so instead of looking at them together, I can now look at them individually. And you'll notice that each, once I separate it, each graph gets its own um, little stickies that go with it. So everything kind of goes together, we, we call them stickies, again, because notice I can move them anywhere, and also, you can also follow what belongs together by looking at these little spider webs, um, so we know that this is going together. And I can drag them back together by either dragging the graphs on top of each other or dragging the functions on top of each other, and it will pull everything back together. So that is just an amazing feature when you're really trying to help students understand visualization is what's a better representation. So that's a quick how to uh, or what the graphing does. And so now let's scroll down and notice that I can scroll down. So this is called a paper. You have unlimited space and you can arrange it and do whatever you want. You can move things where it looks nice or pretty or everything's on the right or everything's on the left and you can unlimited scroll space so I can keep adding. So lots of multiple representations that you can do. So let's go to the next icon. So notice anywhere I click, the icons will come up. So if I had clicked down here, they would come down here. So let's pull up the geometry icon. And if you've ever worked with Sketchpad or GeoGebra or geometry tools, this has all the tools that you would expect. Um, so here's your you know, selecting tool, your point straight edge tools, your circle tools, polygons most you may not have had seen these but we have also the conics in here as well 
and you can add pictures and we have a protractor. This is one of my favorite um, things. So if I uh, put an angle in here, I can actually use my protractor to measure now my angle. So this is really nice for students just learning how to use that tool. But what I wanted to point out is some things that other tools do not have that we have. So we have this draw tool here, and this is fantastic because you can just come in here and draw whatever you feel like and start exploring right away. And it works as you would expect a geometry tool. It's dynamic. Once you draw something, it can move. And, and um, so let's try and draw a circle. I'm usually pretty bad at my circle. Oh, yay, it made a circle. Um, so we have this draw tool. You can just start exploring right away. And then once you have things in your screen, as you would expect, if you click over here on the side, there's, there are um, functions you can do with them. You can measure, you can construct. And so just real quick, here's all the things you can measure. I selected the circle, so notice once I select something, it narrows what I'm allowed to do with it. If I didn't have anything selected, here's all my options for measurement. So there's lots of things you can measure. Um, supplementary, interior angles of regular, exterior angles. So a lot of features that are new um, to geometry software, because I've never worked with any that have those except this. There's construction, so amazing things that you can construct. You can change, you know, size, color, points. You can add tick marks, congruent marks. So geometry is a pretty amazing, very robust um, thing. And notice I have geometry on the same page that I have graphics. So you don't have to go to a new screen. So that's kind of the beauty. Let's get a, get to the next icon. The next icon is data. And you, you know, you have columns and rows and you can add data. You can copy and paste data into this or you can just type in data. So I'm just gonna type in some numbers here. Oops, that's a terrible number. And I don't know. And you could add labels in here as well. Um, and we will get much more into specifics when we do um, a webinar specifically on data. But once you have data in, all you have to do, notice I'm in the table, and when I clicked on this, this statistics menu came up. So I just wanna point out all the things that you can do in statistics. There's calculations, one variable, two variable, regressions, lots of different regressions that you can do. Um, for AP stats, there's uh, a lot of tests that are done, intervals, distributions, so you'll see it's very robust statistics, and then lots of graphing that we can do. So I wanna just kind of briefly show you how it works. It's gonna seem, seem very similar to the graphing, but it's because it's coming from the data first, so that's kind of nice. You can either start with a graph or you can start with data. So if I select um, a call, let's select, Oh, that's a boring one. Let's select this one. Let's select column B and just show you what a, a very one variable statistics looks like. So real quick, I select the column I'm interested and it will do all the one variable calculations for me and they come up here in this nice little sticky for me. But let's say now I want to maybe graph a couple data plots. So I'm going to go to graph and let's do a scatter plot and let's even do a box and whisker and a histogram and notice I have all of my graphs in one place. It's very quick. I can do some comparisons. If I click on the graphs, I get information about them. Uh, you know, so all of these things happen in the graphs. And remember again, just like we did up above, I can separate the graphs out and talk about which one maybe is the better representation and all the information goes with it. So that is the data or statistics. Let's scroll down to sequences and sequences. Um, you'll notice you, you can, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Let's go back up here. Ah. And here's the beauty. If all else fails, you can close it out and start over. So what I wanted to show you, there we go. That's what I want to show. You can choose your type of sequence, explicit, recursive, different. Um, so if I change to explicit, watch what happens in my, uh, sequence over here. And once you put in a sequence, you can then see the graph of it. So everything is connected and you have lots of choices here. And then notice I'm in sequence. I want to show you what happens when you're in here in the sequence tab. This math tab that I showed you earlier on the keyboard is now available. And so it has different 
um, templates for you to use in your sequence. So that's the sequence one. And then financial, which would, remember was hidden um, before when we didn't have a, a, an official account. Now that I have an account, here's my finance. And this is just kind of template dir driven. So let's go to uh, day count. That's always an easy one. So basically it's things that you fill in. So if I wanted to pick um, how many days left we are here, and let's say the end of, or let's do Christmas. When is Christmas? How many days until Christmas? Because that's always something that's important to know. So always. then I just put in, what? I said that's always, yes. Always important. Always so then important. once I put in the information and I hit days, it's going to tell me how many days. 261, that seems like quite a lot. So, <laughs> I know, right? So far away. <laughs> so far away. Um, so financial, there's lots of things that you can do here. You got cash flow, amortization, cost sell, day count. So these are some nice templates and you just basically, if we want to pull in simple interest, it's how many days, what's the interest rate, what's the, what's the principal value when you start, all those types of things. So financial is very template oriented, very easy to use. The last thing I want to show you, last icon is text. And text is exactly that. This is great. Remember, you can design your paper to be however you want. So the text can be used for directions. Um, make a graph, right? It can also be used. I, I use um, classpad.net all the time with my students. And so they can, I might have an activity that they're working on, and then I create a text box for them to write their answers. So you know, answers here. So I have my directions in one text box and they write their answers in another, that type of thing. But one amazing thing about text box is, obviously you can change font size, but is this little icon right here. This is math type. So if I'm, especially when I'm doing directions, I want them to graph, you know, a specific function or something like that, I can actually type the function out and have it look the way I want it to look. So maybe I want it to be one half, x squared minus two thirds x oops, equals five. I can use all the templates. So notice when I clicked that icon, the, the um, keyboard, keypad came up and I can use all the templates that are in here. And so that is a really nice feature. You basically have a built-in math type. Um, you can make the your math look the way it needs to in your directions or text. And students, same thing with students when they're doing their answers. If the minute they click this little icon, all the templates become available to them. So that is just a really brief, what are all these icons when you click in, in classpad.net, what do they all do? Very brief, we are gonna be having more webinars with specific how-tos and um, using them with specific math content. But before I proceed to the last piece, um, is there any questions, Amy, that maybe needs to be addressed? I know I went really fast with that. <laughs> no, I think everyone was able to follow along pretty well. Um, one question that came up because you're talking about sharing this with your students and using this with your students. Um, so I know that we're going to talk about this in another webinar, but can you talk about briefly um, what some of the things you've done with your students? Yes. Okay. So. So activity, in fact, it sort of leads into the, the last part that we're going to do in this webinar, which is just to basically how do you find um, resources to support you if you're trying to learn some things, and also um, where are the papers and how do you share things. So let's say I love this paper, which let's be honest, I don't. Um, let's say I wanted to share this with you. Anytime you're working and you've created something that you're creating for your students, um, all you have to do, remember the three dots is to go over to the three dots and you'll see this um, button here that says share. And if I click share, I can make this paper, default is to always have everything you do private. That makes sense. But if you decide I'm done, I'm ready to share it, you can choose to do a URL share and this means it's creating, it'll create a URL and that URL can be put on, you know, Google Sheets, your website, um, however you share things with your students, you can send it in an email. So it's just a URL that you copy and link. And you could password protect it, you could assign a date, that's what homework means, where it's due if you're doing this with your students. You can also decide to share publicly, and publicly means 
any user in the ClassPad family, you know, so any registered user could find your paper. So if you've created something that you want everybody to use or you think it's the best activity ever and you want to share, then that would be a public share. So you, URL or public, both of them get basically, oops, I didn't give the title to my paper. Um, very important, obviously, to have a title. <laughs> so my paper. I guess I always title my papers because I've never had that message before. So that was kind of fun. Um, so URL, all right? So when I hit apply, you'll notice here's my URL and this is all I have to do to share my paper. And so let me just real quick, since we're doing this, show you, let's say I sent that to my students and um, did I copy it? I did not. Let me go back and copy it. If, if, my, if I'm sharing this with my students and I want them to work on the paper, they just click on the link or type the URL or whatever, copy paste it into their browser and that paper will come up. And I wanna show you what happens. Um, we are, I think our next webinar is on this. Uh, so we'll go into a lot more detail, but notice yes. here's my paper, but it's not in an account because it's just a paper that's been shared and they're working it on their own. Um, if they like it or they want to save their own work, they would have to create an account, save it in their account. So that would work for students. So there's going to be more on that. Stay tuned for our part two webinar, which is coming up um, in a week. So let me go briefly back to the ending of this webinar, which we wanted to make sure that before you left, you kind of have a broad overview of what classpad.net can do. How can you get some support if you want to be playing around before you get um, join us in our next webinar? So. One thing I want to show you is I want to go back to the um, classpad.net landing page because there's a lot of resources right there. So if you look across the top, you can go to features, which kind of describes each icon a little bit more, um, plans, uh, if you don't want to sign up for a free account. Some of, some of the apps are um, for fee, but you can look into that rating. Most of it is free. Training, we do offer training um, if you want to do a training with your school, but what you're probably really interested in is the video support. We have a YouTube channel um, and you can find help on all of those things. On this landing page, there's just some basic stuff here. So what's the basic, how to change settings, um, those types of things. And you can see that here's calculating how to use lists. But if you just click here, you're going to get, you're going to end up on our YouTube site. So we have a YouTube site that um, is sorted by playlist. So if you're interested in the geometry sticky, you would go to the geometry playlist. If you're interested in the calculate sticky, you'd go there. So we have videos to support you. We also have, and this is all from the landing page, activities. And these are ready to use activities that have been shared and they are sorted by the icon. So they kind of focus on what that icon is doing. So this is on the calculation, but they're also sorted by math content. So if you wanted to be looking at graphing, you could come to here and you would see that there's a lot of content specific activities. So if I just clicked algebra, here are some specific algebra activities that have already been created. And so these are free to use. So I'm just gonna click one just so you can see what, a, what an activity um, tends to look like, one that's actually designed to be used with students. Uh, it'll just take a second. So this is a shared activity. So notice it's not um, in my account at this point. It's just me working on it. But he, I, this is a great example of here's, here's some text that has directions in it, some more text for directions. Here's some graphs that have been set up that the students have to work on. Here's a place for them to answer questions. And so this is a full on activity. And notice it's, you know, it's got a lot of work in here. So that's what some of the ready to use activities are. So you've got videos, tutorials, you've got activities. Um, and then let's say I'm in my account. So I'm gonna go into my account right now. I think I still, let's go back to my account. There we go. I'm in my account. So remember, I always know I'm in my account if I see the cloud. I wanna also show you where you can find resources. So once you sign up for a free account, um, you get access to your paper management and you'll see uh, there's a ton of papers in here. And next webinar, we're gonna talk about how do you create these folders, how do you share, how do you tag, how do you describe things. But I wanted to show you that once you have an account and you're in your papers, there are public papers that are shared by ClassPad.net users all over the world. 
And if you click that, you can find activities as well. So not just the ones that are on the landing page, these are activities um, that are from who have, there's lots of different people. So if I wanna search, let's say I wanna search, Amy, give me a good topic to search for. Quadratics. Okay, we're gonna do quadratic. You can do keywords if you know. Sometimes um, if you find someone you know does really nice activities, you can search for their name. So once mm -hmm. I type in that word, it's gonna pull up, and notice that there's some tabs up here. So it's gonna pull up my papers first. I don't have any papers, obviously, on quadratic. But I wanna go to the public papers. So if I hit public papers, there are some more. And so these are ones that had to have used that word quadratic in them. So that's in our next webinar, we're gonna talk about how important it is to tag and title. But here's some activities that I could then click on and they'd be already ready for me to use and I could start using them right away. So you have lots of places for resources. So on the, on the main page of classped.net, you have the resource, let's go back there again. You have videos, you have activities, and if you even scroll down, here's some more video tutorials specific to each of the um, content. So lots of resources right there. There's a YouTube page that uh, shows you everything. That's where the videos are coming from. And then there's ready to use activities. And we are gonna be doing some future webinars specifically on um, math content and also on some of these icons a little more in depth. So next webinar, which is uh, part two, we're gonna really dive into how to make papers, share papers, tag papers, describe how to create folders, so how to manage your, your papers once you've created them. So that's our next webinar. Yep. And did I leave anything out, Amy? Any other no, questions? I think that's it. Okay. No, a lot of the questions were kind of related to what you talked about at the end with the paper sharing and the other activities. So um, you know, we kind of answered it a little bit, but like Karen said, we'll go into a lot more in depth um, on how to do all that in our next webinar next week. That's right. So please join us and thank you so much for joining us in this one. Um, please sign up for a free account and just start exploring. Uh, it's, it's the best way to learn is to just start playing it. What can see out what, uh, see what it can do. <laughs> so have fun. And yep, sounds we good. We'll post um, the next, the date for the next webinar up on our website. So yes, and we will have, we, we have this webinar recorded. Um, so we will also post this, start posting these on our YouTube site as well. Um, so that you can go back and kind of watch along again if you, you know, forget something or want to go back and, you know, watch it again as you're playing along with uh, ClassPad.net as well. That's right. So, and, and Karen, can you pull up the PowerPoint with the yes, um, I'm doing that right additional now. information? Yeah? You're ahead of me. Oh, sorry. No, it's good. It's a good reminder. That's why we have the moderator. So, yeah, yep. so here's, here's the links to um, ClassPad.net and so we have a Facebook page where we, you know, are sharing um, activities and things like that, Twitter, and then of course the YouTube where all the videos are. Yes. All right, well, thank you so much. Yep, thank you guys for joining us. And thanks, Amy, for all your help moderating. I know that's You're probably welcome. the hardest part. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, and thank you, Karen, for presenting. You're welcome. All right, see you next time. All right, I think we're good. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. That was good. And that was about 30 minutes. It's like 35, yeah. Yeah, like not that. too bad. Not, to, not, not too bad. All right, yeah. um, do we want to just keep going since we're sort of in the groove? I don't mind if we just keep going now that I'm into it. I just have to set up a new meeting. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, all right. Yeah, Let me do, we're good. How about, let's see, what time is it? How about It's 12? about 10. 12? Okay. Sounds yeah. good. All right. All right. Bye. Okay. Bye. How do I get out of this?